I have always been a painter. Ever since I was a, a quite a young girl, I was always painting. But I actually started painting more professionally in 2020. It was quite difficult. I'd finish my normal nine to five job and then I'd come home and be working really late until about midnight. A typical weekday for recruitment manager Brie Lavis is visiting clients or interviewing candidates for jobs, but not today. Today, she's getting paid to do whatever she wants. I didn't really expect it to be as life-changing as it is. I now actually enjoy my weekends. I do still find myself in the studio, but it's more of a day where I actually enjoy painting in the studio and it's not a chore of feeling like, oh, I have to get this artwork finished and out or I need to create some content. Bree's day job introduced a four-day week in 2020. It follows the 180-100 model where employees get paid 100% of their salary but work only 80% of the hours, if they retain 100% productivity. It is based on productivity and numbers, so you do need to be achieving the goals that you've set out and um, making sure you are still doing your role. Her employer is one of a growing number of companies across Australia trialling this kind of reduced work week. Stephen Hunt's startup, which uses music to improve brain health, is another one. The benefits have been pretty incredible. The main one that we noticed was sick days were reduced by 22%. So that was great. Um, and that we put down to people being able to actually rest and recuperate, not burn out. So at this point, our retention since we implemented it has been 100%, and that's after a year and a half. It forces us as a company to be really effective and to think every time about the things we're doing, make sure they're the right things and that we're executing them in the right way. It's not just boosting his current employees' productivity, it's helping Stephen hire new people too. In a startup, I, I actually have a really long list of benefits that I want to be able to offer my staff when we're as successful as Google, <laughs> but we're not there yet. So what can we do in the short term that's not going to actually cost the business any money, um, but that might actually even bring the business a benefit? This model of flexible work has mainly been trialled in small and medium-sized businesses, but larger corporates are slowly catching on. We did a trial on four-day week at our New Zealand business, which is about 80 employees. It was an 18-month long trial and it continues to be the way of working now. So we had incredible business results at the end of the trial, uh, including revenue growth and all the other factors in terms of engagement, well-being, all moved positively. Omar 3 in 1 capsules. Unilever Australia, the company behind some of our biggest personal care and ice cream brands, is just over halfway through a 12-month trial of a four-day week. It just made a logical sense for us to bring it to a slightly more larger and nuanced business like Australia, where we now have 500 people in the trial. I think the fundamental conviction that this is the right thing to do and productivity and efficiency and well-being will lead to better outcomes, I think is conviction that business leaders need to have to move towards this. 70% of the companies, so seven out of the 10, said that productivity had actually gone up for them and the other three said that productivity had remained about the same and none of them said that productivity had dropped. Associate Professor John Hopkins has spent most of this year studying companies like this. His research found that the model is working for employers and their staff. Being able to do those things like, you know, go to the shops or clean the house and free up time so that the weekend was really the weekend for them. Also more time to spend on hobbies and pastimes and even quite a few reported that they'd taken up new hobbies that they didn't have before. But I think the most encouraging one was the fact that people were spending more time on their health and wellness. But for frontline workers like nurses, teachers and emergency service personnel, transitioning to a four day week may prove difficult. I think there are more challenges for any, any type of role where People need to be present. So if somebody dropped from five days a week to four days a week, that would mean somebody else would have to cover that shift or that day. So there would be a financial cost associated with that. Research done by Four Day Week Global, a not-for-profit, 
shows the model can also have a clear impact on gender roles. 17% of the men in its trial in straight relationships spent more time looking after their kids, and 27% did more housework. I think what we can see from this kind of change is a really significant innovation that might assist us with gender equality. Thank you all for being here and thank you for your submission. Also. Green Senator Barbara Pocock chaired a Senate inquiry into work and care earlier this year. At the moment we've got hours patterns with many men working long hours of work and many women working part time. That locks women into domestic work and care of kids and it prevents many men from being particip participants in the care of their own kids or others. So a four day week moves us more to a shared pattern of work and a better sharing on the home front. Senator Pocock has asked the federal government to consider funding a national four day week trial. She believes it could also help address staff shortages at a time when it's a really a tight labour market. People are looking for more flexibility for reduced working hours. They may well be more inclined to join the labour market. An artist doesn't paint within the lines and I feel like businesses need to do the same and not stick within the lines and really think about everyone as human beings. I don't think any amount of money would make me want to work full time again.